Welcome to Living the Reclaim Life podcast. I'm Denisha. We're glad you're here for conversations that revive hope, inspire healing, and encourage you to live a vibrant life with Christ. So grab a cup of coffee as we chat with today's guest. Before we get started, we have a gift for you and we want to celebrate together. You see, we launched this podcast in March of this year. And I have to tell you, I did it with fear and trembling. Literally, I sat here at this microphone thinking, I know nothing about podcasting. What am I doing? But what I did have was a passion, a passion for you to hear real life examples of people's lives where Jesus has reclaimed their story because there's hope in that. And since then, we have had thousands of downloads worldwide. And I want to say thank you. Thank you for being a loyal listener. Thank you for your emails of encouragement and your emails of vulnerability. We are here for you. Did you know that this podcast is a ministry of reclaimed story? We are a nonprofit organization out of Tucson, Arizona, who helps women find hope and healing through Jesus after a painful past. If reclaimed story has touched your life, I would like to invite you to help support our mission by going to our website to shop for your Christmas gifts, inspiring jewelry and a beautiful journal line with messages that speak hope and remind us who we are in Christ. As a thank you, we have a code for you to get 10% off your purchase this Christmas season. The code is 10 off for me. That's the number 10, the word off, the number four, me. That will get you 10% off your purchase and also free shipping in the U.S. We hope that is a blessing to you. So head on over to reclaimstory.com and use your code for special gifts. The link and code will also be in the show notes. So let's get started with today's podcast. In December, we are going to do a 2021 rehash of the most listened to episodes. In this episode, we are going to see how hope invaded a marriage after an affair, and after a divorce. You are going to hear a story that has been reclaimed and restored. And if God can do it for my friend, Heather, he can do it for you as well. Today, we are carrying the hope with you as we dive into today's episode. I am excited to introduce you to um, a new friend. Her name is Heather Johnson, and we were introduced through a mutual friend of ours, She is married with three kids. She's involved um, with Sozo Ministry, which is a healing and deliverance ministry. And friends, I want to tell you today, you are going to be so encouraged by her story. Um, She has an amazing story of restoration in her marriage. And I think with the season that we're in, I think this is just such amazing timing of God's um, to bring Heather's story to us today. So Heather, welcome. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Before we get into your story of restoration in your marriage, tell us a little bit about how you grew up. Um, yeah, so I um, I grew up in a secular home. Um, I was raised by my grandma who loved me uh, to the best of her ability, but really lacked in the area of fulfilling the emotional needs of all children. <laughs> um, I didn't have a father in the picture. Um, and my mom was in and out of my life. She struggled with, uh, drugs. Although side note real quick, she has just graduated from the year long program at the teen challenge home of hope, um, and is on her way to doing a six month internship. So praise God for that. Um, all that to say, um, I was like everyone else really searching for my identity. Uh, not unlike many other fatherless girls. Um, I thought it would be found in how pretty I was and what boy would date me. Um, I was sexually active at a young age and outside of a few, um, you know, actual relationships, I continued in, uh, promiscuity until I met my husband in 2007. Um, I instantly knew something was different about him. Granted, we were both, uh, partying and doing everything that went along with that, but I knew something was different about this guy. Um, and later I would find out that the difference was of course, Jesus, Mm -hmm. Um, a few months into our relationship, I gave my life to the Lord Mm -hmm. and fast forward a couple years, we were married. We had our first son. A few years later, we had our daughter. A couple years after that, we adopted my biological brother due to my mom's continued struggle with drugs at that point. 
Um, we had a beautiful life with a beautiful family. We attended church weekly, usually twice. We had a great group of Christian friends that we were living life with and our marriage was good. We hardly ever fought. And I think to a lot of other couples, we had a marriage that some people longed for. Um, in 2016, I had an opportunity to fulfill a lifelong dream. I got a call from a dear friend telling me that American Idol was in town that day and being a singer was something I had longed for. Um, I very quickly found a babysitter and was standing in line to audition with American Idol within a couple hours from getting that call. I was really nervous, but really excited. And then I got the call from my husband, um, he was uncharacteristically upset that I was there and I didn't understand what had caused this seemingly overreaction in him. Um, but he told me he wanted me to leave and go home and be with our children. So I stood in line just three people away from the door where I would have auditioned and decided that I couldn't go through with it without the blessing from my husband. I felt like I needed to submit to him despite the complete and total lack of understanding that I had and the wrenching pain that I felt. Um, I didn't know it at the time, but this would be the event that the enemy would use to plant a not so small seed of bitterness towards my husband within me. <clears throat> of course, we talked through it uh, later that evening and he apologized and we realized what had trig triggered his emotions, but it really wasn't enough. Um, growing up in the family that I did, I was never taught how to communicate my feelings well. I had a lot of insecurities that began with how I looked and ended with how I felt or what I thought. I had a fear of being judged um, or even loved less for my thoughts, feelings, and emotions. So I kept a lot of them to myself, uh, even from my husband, mostly unknowingly, of course. And this event uh, was no different. Um, about half a year later, I saw an old boyfriend pop up on my Facebook and I decided to send him a friend request. With that root of bitterness towards my husband still firmly in place and my unresolved connection between self-worth and what men think of me, I quickly found myself confiding in this other guy. From there, my downward spiral into full-blown sin happened really fast. Within a couple of weeks, I had met this man in person. And with a within a couple of weeks from there, I was talking with him about divorcing my husband and my husband had found out. Um, my husband reached out to everyone in our lives, searching for his own support and someone to convince me that I was going down the wrong path. I met with multiple friends and talked with multiple family members and nobody could ever get through to me. I was so blinded by my deceptive feelings and my sin. Um, Jeremiah 17, nine says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick who can understand it. I would never uh, come to fully understand that verse until I came out on the other side of this nightmare. Um, I remember sitting across one friend in particular, um, who unfortunately, um, our friendship has never quite been the same, but I remember her trying to talk to me and, and reason with me and help me see the path that I was going down. And, I, um, I just remember desperately wanting to listen to her and yet my feelings just wouldn't let me, um, it's, it's a strange feeling to, to know what you want to do, um, and know what's right, but feel so, um, strongly to do the other thing. That huge event where, um, this huge dream, you know, I, an opportunity to fulfill a dream, and just that getting crushed and, you know, nothing against my husband. I mean, we've worked through that um, and he had his own things to figure out about why that had happened that way. But um, again, just that root of bitterness. Um, and I think it would be important to note here that um, we really underestimate the power of um that the enemy can have in these situations where bitterness or unforgiveness or hurts and wounds, um, take place. And, you know, looking back on that now, I would have really worked to release that and forgive him. And it's just not something I had been taught at that point in, in my Christian life. Um, so I think, I think the church or just we as a whole would do, 
each other a great service to um, bring that to light um, more than it is at the moment, you know, to, to realize that when, when we're hurt or wronged and those roots try to take place and the enemy uses those things, um, just how important it is to, to speak against those things, to pray against those things and to forgive quickly, whether you feel like it or not. (laughs) So true. That's so true. That's really, that's great advice. Yeah. So from there, um, I, like I said, I, I continued, um, to pursue this other guy. I, I ended up moving in with him. My husband and I divorced in January of 2017. And within a couple months after that, I, uh, despite how I was feeling, um, again, with those deceptive feelings, I still felt like I loved this man. I didn't want to be back with my husband. Um, but the Holy spirit was convicting me heavily. He was, um, pursuing me. He, you know, like the scripture says, he leaves the 99 to go after the one. And, um, I, I would have never understood that verse more than I did in that season of my life, um, where he really just sought me out again, despite me not seeking him. And, um, yeah, I, I ended up telling this guy, I I don't want to leave you. I still love you, but I can't ignore the Holy spirit and I can't live like this. Fortunately, I realized quickly that just this guy's manipulation and mind control really came to light in, in me leaving him. And I, because of safety reasons, I had to, uh, I had to call a domestic abuse hotline. Um, They put me up in a hotel. And a couple nights into that stay, I was still really questioning my decision to leave this guy. I I was still feeling very much in love with him, still didn't really feel love for my husband, and, and really just questioning if God even existed or heard me or cared. And I, I cried out to him and I just basically said, Lord, I, for one, I'm in so much pain. I need you to take this from me. I need you to, if I, if I made the right decision to leave this guy, I need you to take my feelings for him away. And I need to know that I made the right choice and that, um, I am supposed to be back with my husband. And and not only that, I need to know that you're real and that you're listening to me right now. Um, and so I prayed that through tears, went to sleep and woke up the next day completely free from any love or, um, you know, wishing I was still with this guy. All those feelings were gone. And I just knew without a doubt that I was, I had made the right decision. And I, most importantly, I knew that God was listening to me and that he was real. (laughs) If you're in a hotel and you're about to go into teen challenge and you're praying and you're, you're fully in love with this, with this ex-boyfriend, right? And you're praying, God, if this is you, that's telling me to go back to my husband, make this, make these feelings stop. Mm -hmm. That is such an amazing, just a sovereign act of God right there to that. Then you wake up in the morning and these feelings that drove you to leave Mm -hmm. your family, right. To leave your husband, suddenly are completely gone. Tell us a little bit more about when you woke up that morning, what did that feel like? Did you realize it was an answer to prayer at the time? Instantly, (laughs) instantly, because his, my, my thoughts towards this guy, um, again, he was very manipulative, um, controlling, um, you know, mind control was, was strong. So, I was constantly thinking about him and wondering, you know, if I should still be with him. And so to wake up the next morning, completely free from that, um, I, I, I would even, (laughs) it sounds silly now, but I would even try and force myself to think of memories with him just so I could see how it would make me feel. And I, I mean, no tears, no, no, um, missing him at all. No, no love, you know, I wasn't in love with him. I didn't want to be with him. I wasn't questioning anything. So yeah, I instantly knew God had answered my prayer and it was truly a miracle. Um, a moment I will always look back on and, and realize, you know, God loves me so much, um, to have done that for me to have answered that prayer. Um, yeah, it, there's nothing, there's almost no experiences like it. I won't say there's not any, cause I've, I've, I've had multiple with the Lord, but it's definitely, it was definitely the beginning of many. 
Wow. That's really amazing. That's encouraging, right? Cause I'll bet, yeah. you know, every, every single prayer you've ever prayed probably didn't get answered that quickly. <laughs> right. Right. Or at least not to my knowledge. Um, yeah. And it was powerful because, um, it allowed me to, move from that place that week at that hotel and go into the home of hope, which is a, a, a it's a team challenge uh, program for women who are dealing with just hurts, hangups, hab- habits. It's usually for drugs and alcohol, but um, there's plenty of women there for codependency issues. And that's what I went there for. And um, because of the miracle that God had done in answering that prayer, I was able to go into the home of hope and focus right away on the healing that I needed and not have to mourn this relationship any longer or, or miss that guy at all. Um, and so, yeah, it, 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 the, the benefits of him answering that prayer just continued to, to come to light, uh, as different things, you know, from going into the home of hope and then fast forwarding to when I went home just to truly be free from all of that was amazing. <laughs> Tell us about a little bit about your time in, um, the home of hope. What was that like? What type of experience? I have a friend that works for teen challenge and I am amazed at your programs and stuff. What did you experience while you were there? Yes. So I will agree. It's an amazing program. Um, it was the best decision I ever made. Um, I made it because my husband asked me to do it in order to show him that I was serious about being back with my family. Um, so I spent three months there and I was just immersed in God's presence. It was, um, daily, but you know, we, they kind of make you read the Bible, which is, you know, it's a good thing, obviously. Um, so you're up in the morning reading the Bible and writing down, you know, what the Lord is speaking to you. And then throughout the day, you're doing homework and devotions and there's chapel twice a week. And, um, just a lot of time sitting in the Lord's presence as well as getting to the roots of, um, for me, at least where, where, um, where I still had hurts and wounds from my childhood that led me to the place I was at in that moment. Um, cause obviously we all know that it's never just one, one thing. There's always layers there. So, so yeah. Um, and one particular, um, healing moment for me at the home of hope was when I did something called a Sozo, which is a, a deliverance and healing ministry, that I am grateful to now be a part of, um, outside of that. So yeah, overall it was a, an amazing experience. And, um, sometimes I wish I would have stayed longer, <laughs> but, um, I think, you know, God knew that I was ready and I was ready to be back with my family. So that's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. I think that's really encouraging. Um, cause I know a lot of families that are looking for resources right now and mm-hmm. so they care about your experience on the inside of teen challenge is beautiful. Yeah. When you came out, when you came out of the home of hope, what was that like? So you came back home to your husband and your kids and tell us a little bit about that. I can't imagine it being in just everything was perfect all of a sudden, right? <laughs> Yeah, no. So we're still on earth. So the answer to that is definitely not. Um, so yeah, I came out of the home of hope feeling so connected to the Lord and so healed from everything that I needed to be healed in. Um, of course, excited to be back under the same roof with my three children and my husband. Um, unfortunately I quickly realized that although I had healed from everything that had happened, my husband had definitely not, um, I've told, I've, I've said it this way that the, the torment that I put my husband through with the affair and the divorce was probably equally matched by the torment he put me through when I came home. And again, that was just because he, he didn't have, he didn't have the experience I did with getting to be in, you know, almost a bubble, just immersed in God's presence all the time. And, um, he was still taking care of kiddos. So, you know, it, it made sense. But, um, shortly after I came home, I would say within the first, I don't know, six months, he, we found out that there was a Sozo ministry in Tucson and he went and had a Sozo, um, deliverance prayer for himself. And that was definitely a turning point for him and, and 
our marriage. It, 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 um, put us on the road that we needed to go on to finally move forward from everything that had happened. Um, from there, we started seeing, um, some amazing marriage counselors who had a similar testimony to ours. Um, and they just helped us uncover things that we had been struggling with in our marriage, um, before, you know, things that we had never known. Um, even as I mentioned, you know, we had such a good marriage and we hardly ever fought. And most people see that as a good thing, but we quickly realized in counseling that it was just a way that we were, um, we were basically conflict avoiders as one of the terms that we learned. And, um, again, with just not knowing how to process feelings, you know, there was a lot of reasons for that, but just knowing now that when we have issues, even if it causes a fight, it's better than ignoring it and trying to sweep it under the rug. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. That's so true. It's hard to do that though, isn't it? It's hard to face those things head on. Mm-hmm. It's easier to avoid them, but it's so much worth it to so much more worth it to <laughs> dive in and, and tackle those things and keep that communication open. Yes. And being on the other side of everything we went through, I mean, we realize how much more we want to, we would rather argue through something and get to the bottom of it than, than ignore it and let things fester. And, and again, let those, any roots of, you know, bitterness or, you know, anything go on. And so tell us about where you are today. So this was a few years back and what step did you guys take to, um, to reinstate your marriage after the divorce? Yeah. So, um, a couple years after I came home, um, we had a beautiful ceremony, just a few family and friends who truly stuck by us through this whole thing. And we just recommitted ourselves to one another and to the Lord before, um, like I said, before some family and friends and before the Lord and, um, our kids got to be a part of that and just watch our, our story of forgiveness and reconciliation. And we've, we've been really open with them about everything we've gone through. So, um, it was really a powerful moment. I'm so glad that we, you know, some people said, do you really need to do another, another ceremony or wedding? But I'm so glad that we did because, um, it just, it just solidified more healing and, um, brought us into a deeper level of that. So, um, now we, um, we're on a journey of just trusting the Lord and waiting on him to show us what's next. But, um, he, within the last year, he moved us to a new state, um, and we moved pretty much on faith. And we know for reasons that could fill a whole nother podcast that we're in the right house, not even just the right state or town, but the actual house that we live in. So it's, It's been amazing to be on this journey with the Lord and see his provision through it all. Um, And from here, we're just praying about new ministry opportunities and um, seeing what else the Lord has in store for us. You have such a beautiful victory yourself. You know, I know, I know um, having that victory for yourself and being able to share that victory with other couples is really just, that's such a gift in itself. You guys have walked the road. You guys have walked the road, you know, up to divorce and getting remarried and now having a great life together. That is just such, it's, it's such a testimony of God's reconciliation and his power to come in and just, and and lead us back to being unified. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. And have you had opportunities to sort of share your story and minister to other people who have found themselves in similar situations? I, we have shared our story with couples and I, I, I think that we've helped, um, you know, counsel some situations people are going through, but not exactly the same scenario, you know, not, not adultery per se. Um, not yet. Anyways, I trust that God will use our story for, for that very reason. I mean, just like the Bible says, he, he purposes everything together for our good. And, and so I have to believe that our testimony will be somebody else's victory for sure. Yeah. 
Amen. I agree with you with that. I think, (laughs) I think it's so courageous of you. And I know you have your husband's permission to share today. And I think that is such a courageous step from both of you that are on the other side of this. Now you've had your marriage healed and restored and now just using that um, to show what God can do. And just the miracle that you experienced, you know, in the hotel room that night to Mm -hmm. restoring your family. You know, I know I'm sure we have listeners that are hoping for that same restoration. So I know your story really brings hope to that and you have tangible steps um, that helped you to get there. So I'm excited to see what God's going to do with your story. Are there any tips that you would have for anybody if they're ex- they would like to experience that type of forgiveness, any direction that you would, you would say out of your own experience? Yeah. I mean, I would, I would definitely point to the Sozo ministry. <laughs> <laughs> that I'm a part of. I mean, that is pretty much what it is all about. I mean, first and foremost, it's it's connecting the person to to God, um, so that they have that um, connection to hear from Him. But but secondly, it's definitely um, those those very things that we're talking about: releasing bitterness, uh, extending forgiveness, and just healing from those wounds. Like I said, that the enemy so easily just kind of plants in us without us even knowing it sometimes, usually. So yeah, Sozo would be my first recommendation for that. And then counseling, of course, is always great. And But in addition to that, it, it's really just as simple as just, you know, saying, I release bitterness towards this person for doing, you know, fill in the blank to me and you know, I, I release them to you, God. And I ask you to, you know, heal my heart from, from this wound. And, um, it doesn't always have to be any more complicated than that. And just speaking that out is, is powerful. And usually the first step that somebody needs to take in, in seeing that area healed. And are there any books that you would recommend if someone doesn't have a Sozo ministry close to them? Yeah. So one book that had been recommended to my husband and I, when we started counseling was a book called Torn Asunder. Um, and it's by Dave Carter. I'm sure you'll put it in the link. Show notes. Yeah. Yeah. So that was, um, an amazing book. It, it's, it takes you through everything for the spouse who had the affair to the one who, you know, was, um, cheated on. And again, I mean, that was one of the ways we realized, you know, it has these different categories so you can figure out what kind of marriage you had, um, prior to the affair. And again, one of that's, that's kind of how we realized we were conflict avoiders and, um, it doesn't sound like a big deal, but obviously it can, it can lead to some serious things like it did for us. So I would highly recommend that book. Thank you. That's awesome. You know, the other thing you talked about, Heather, that really caught me and I thought, wow, that is a whole nother podcast we could spend talking yeah. about just that, um, is you mentioned that feelings can be deceptive and mm-hmm. you were talking about, um, you know, when you were just kind of first, um, you know, o- online and friend requested, you know, that the other gentleman and as you, um, begin to have some feelings emerge that you follow. Talk a little bit about that. What would you say to a woman right now who's struggling with that um, possible curiosity or dabbling online? Because that's kind of can be our escape, right? As moms and wives and working at home and all the things, sometimes our phone or computer can be an escape for us. And if, if she's starting to be lured or tempted into a direction other than her husband, what, what would you, what would you say to her? How would you, um, what would you encourage her with? Um, yeah. So I realized coming out on the other side of it, for me, it's easy to look back and, and think about what I would say now, but, um, I would say that the first thing you probably need to do is tell your husband, um, he may be the last person you want to open up that door to, but he's the one that needs to know and, and fast. Um, because if you're feeling tempted to talk to another man, um, obviously we're responsible for our own actions, but there's gotta be something in, in your marriage that probably needs to be worked through. 
Um, so just being open with your husband, um, yes, it might be hurtful for him and it might be hard, but it's certainly not going to be any harder than, than going any further in that direction. If that's for some reason, not an option, I would say revealing it to a trusted friend who's going to give you good advice and seeking counseling either with or without your husband as fast as possible. And again, it's just, it, it may be easier for me to see now, but it's just praying against those feelings because they are strong. And I, I know that firsthand, but if, if you could just find it within yourself to just start praying against it, despite, despite how good and exciting they might feel at the beginning to just try and find it within yourself to know that they're, they're a liar. <laughs> those feelings are liars and they may start out exciting, but they're going to end badly they're going to walk you down a path that is anything but fun and exciting in the end. That's really good advice. Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Well, Heather, thank you so much for coming on and for your, your bravery to share your story and just what God has done. You can so see the hand of God in your story. And from that moment, I'm just so still blown away that your prayer in that hotel room that night of God take these feelings from me. If they're not from you and you want me to go back to my husband, take them. I just, Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm going to be thinking about that for a few days. Like, Oh, it's amazing. I know we don't always get answers to prayer, maybe that fast. Um, but that really is an amazing moment where, um, just God turned the whole thing around for you and you didn't have to struggle through those things. Many, many people do have to struggle through letting go of that new relationship in order to go back and reconcile. And I know that's a process. And just as God was with you in your moment in that hotel room, that God will be with them in their moment. You know, if someone's listening, who's in that process right now. So your story brings a ton of hope and encouragement. And I'm excited to see um, just the path that God has for you and your husband and your sweet family next. So thank you so much for sharing today, Heather. Well, we will uh, see you back next week. uh, Same time, same place on Living the Reclaimed Life. Thanks for listening. I pray you found hope in today's conversation and maybe even feel a little less alone in your story. Stay connected with us on Facebook and Instagram at Reclaimed Story. Want to learn more about living a reclaimed life and how you can be a part of our growing community of reclaimers? Check out our website at reclaimstory.com. All of those links and more will be in the show notes. And if you enjoyed this inspirational podcast, be sure to subscribe, rate, and review. That is a huge help in helping us reach more people to live the reclaimed life. Thank you so much for listening. 